Five steps to starting a photography business in 2023. 2023 is your year. The year you finally take the plunge and start that photography business you've been dreaming about. But first, you're gonna need a new set of tools to help you build this machine. By the end of this video, you're going to have a clear path that you can start today to build a successful photography business and avoid the common pitfalls of all newbies in our industry. This is gonna be one heck of a head start for you. You are already gonna be miles ahead of everyone who's starting without this video. And you can also go to boudoirguild.com to pick up the business mastery course I have there that is going to turn this up to 11 and seriously shave years off your learning curve. I don't know about you, but if I could have had that education when I built my own business, I'd be filming this on my own island right now with my yacht parked out there and um, you know I would still be doing this even if I had all of that money and fame and glory and success because of all the money that I've made over the years and the successes that I've found in this business helping people feel good with my photography and helping other people learn how to do what I do is honestly way more valuable than any boat or island that I could ever buy so cheers to that Hey, I am Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer in Silicon Valley, California. I've been doing this since 2010 and teaching photography and business since 2012. So I've been in the game a while. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned from a lot of really smart people along the way. And I'm gonna share some of that golden wisdom with you so that you can, again, shave years off your learning curve and start making money faster so you can ditch that nine to five and become a full-time profitable photographer. So I'm gonna give you five really important things to do to start a successful photography business in 2023. Number one, change your identity, followed closely by number two, stay out of jail. Number three, figure out what you're selling. Number four, sell it. And number five, do it again. You might be thinking, Mike, is this about photography? Or are we about to rob a bank? Well, we're going to figuratively rob a bank because you're going to end up with a boatload of cash after this, but you're going to get it legally. So let's start by changing your identity. Now, I don't mean you're changing your name. I don't mean you're swapping pronouns or whatever else you feel like doing to change your identity. Instead, you are no longer a photographer. That's it. Nope. No more. If someone asks you, what do you do? You are not a photographer. You're like, but Mike, I wanna be a photographer. Well, that's cool, but you know what photographers do? They take pictures. Do you know what they don't do? Make money. Instead, you are a business owner. That is your new identity. And when you claim that identity, this is psychology, trust me, or go read any of the, I don't know, maybe 100 books I've read on the subject. When you adopt an identity, you align your actions to that identity. So when you ask someone to come over to your house for a barbecue, oh, sorry, I don't eat meat. No, they tell you, oh, sorry, I'm a vegetarian. Because their identity is the vegetarian, the actions are I don't eat meat. If they offer you a cigarette, you're just like, nope, I'm not a smoker because you don't smoke. But I'm not a smoker is identity. I do not smoke is the action. So when you start describing yourself as a business owner, your mindset will automatically shift because you will want to do things that are in alignment with this new identity. And you might not know what those are quite yet, but just acknowledging that I am a business owner, that is a huge, huge first step. And you are going to feel really uncomfortable when you do things that don't align with being a business owner. Again, this is psychology. Use it to your advantage. It's why people who are flat earthers have such a difficult time letting go of the concept because their identity is not tied to discovering the true shape of the planet. Their identity is tied to the planet being a certain shape already. There is a huge difference there. So don't be a flat earther, <laughs> be a business owner. And I'm not even gonna say no offense to the flat earthers out there because that's a whole other video. All right, let's go to number two. Stay out of jail. Cheers to that. What does that mean? Well, as boudoir photographers, we have a tougher time advertising our wares everywhere compared to family photographers, children photographers, literally anybody else. So we are playing in somebody else's sandbox. 
all the time. And we do this by operating a business and we do this by marketing our business. So firstly, get legal. You need to be able to take payments legally. You can't just have people Venmo you. They can't uh, just give you envelopes of cash under the table. That's not a real business. You need to collect revenue. You need to itemize your expenses. You need to pay taxes on all of this stuff. You need a business license. You probably need a resale permit if you are in America, a tax ID for your business as well. There's a lot that goes into that. Insurance on everything, whether it's people and equipment in your studio or office and out on location, those are all things that you're going to need as well. So getting legal is literally just operating a legal business. If you're a hobbyist and you want to make money on the side, groovy. This isn't for you. This is for folks who actually want to run a business and turn this into a career. We also have to operate in other people's playgrounds when it comes to marketing. And I don't mean actually going to a playground to sell boudoir photography, probably get arrested. But when we go on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or literally anywhere, we have to play by their rules. So you cannot show visible nipples or bare bottoms on Facebook or your account can get flagged. It's also really tough to do boudoir photos for ads. Even though my news feed, all of the ads are lingerie companies and they show way more skin than any of the photos that I share on there. But it doesn't matter because we are at the whim of somebody else who is making the yes or no decision. It could be someone doing quality control that day who had a really bad day and needs to feel important and they are going to deny everything. Or it's maybe 4.55 on a Friday. They don't even care anymore. It's the last day of their job. They're going to approve everything. And then everywhere in between on that spectrum. So just acknowledging every time I post on a social media platform, I have to meet all of their criteria or my account can get shut down or my content can get banned. I can get put in Facebook jail or, or whatever the other programs call it. You have to play by their rules. Your website is yours. Do whatever you want on there. Your email list is yours. Generally do whatever you want as long as people consented to be on your email list, you know, and have the opportunity to unsubscribe if they want. Then you can contact them and send them any photos and any promotions and anything you would like. So rather than get angry about the fact that, you know, I can't post certain photos on Facebook and my ads keep getting denied, I have to learn how to play the game, post the stuff that I am allowed to post, run the ads I am allowed to run and make the most of it. And you can do that too. Number three is figure out what you are selling. This is huge in the boudoir space, really in business. Let's take Blockbuster Video, for example. They were not a video store. They were an entertainment distribution company. There is a huge difference between those two things. A video store rents videos to people. What happens when videos are no longer the newest, latest, greatest technological advantage? Well, the video store goes out of business. However, if you are a media or entertainment distribution company, you say, well, we've been distributing movies in this format, VHS, say. Uh, people are no longer renting VHS tapes, so now we're going to do DVDs or Blu-ray. Cool. People don't even want to do that anymore. They want to just watch them streaming at home. Great, we're gonna do that. And as soon as somebody like Netflix enters the industry and says, hey, we're just gonna mail you the stuff, you don't even have to go to the store. Hate late fees? Cool. Uh, we don't charge those. Keep it as long as you want. As soon as you send it back, we'll give you another movie. They understood the needs and wants of the client better than any of the previous video rental companies did. And that's why Netflix is still around and they're freaking huge. And that's why Blockbuster Video is a case study in not knowing what you do. Want to stick to photography? Let's talk about Kodak Film. They had the first patent on the digital camera, but they didn't want to be an imaging company. They wanted to be a film company. Well, somebody else produced a digital camera and then everyone after them produced digital cameras and Kodak went out of business. They could have been the premier, the number one digital camera company that, you know, uh, white label stuff to Sony, Canon, Nikon, whoever else. But instead, they decided to stick to the business model they thought they were in 
and they ended up filing for bankruptcy. There are countless cases of this. So you are not in the business to take pretty pictures of people. They can do that with their own phone in the bathroom mirror. You're not in the in the business of selling prints because people can get nice prints done at Costco or order them online themselves. You, as a boudoir photographer, are in the business of helping people feel good about themselves. We provide a therapeutic service to people whether it's boosting their confidence, their self-esteem, it's reinvigorating a romantic relationship. There are a ton of reasons why people book us. None of it is really about wanting to take sexy photos. That is like the surface level thing. The psychological change they actually want to achieve is why we're in business. So learning that is going to allow you to connect better with your clients. You're going to book clients faster, make more money, and you'll serve them better because you're giving them what they want. So you'll, you know, stay in business and not be shut out like Blockbuster and Kodak. Number four, you actually have to sell it. You know, a lot of photographers are like, no, I don't like sales. I don't want to do that. It feels gross. Well, we're not used car salespeople. I'm sure there's some great used car salespeople out there, but we are solutions providers and there is a difference. It's not just a corporate buzzword because I'm in Silicon Valley. Most of the time it's BS, but in this case, it's actually true. We provide people with a solution to their problem. If they don't have the problem, we don't provide them the solution. It's that easy. But there are so many people out there who need what we do. We can pass up all of the leads that are not a good fit for us and go after the ones who are and make a very, very satisfying living serving people well. So actually selling what we do is not forcing people to buy things they don't want. It's not being pushy. It's not being slimy. It's not being gross and uncomfortable. It's recognizing, hey, this is the thing that you want. I recognize that this is how you need to be served right now. I can do that. And this is how I do it. Would you like to book a session? That is about as salesy as we should get. We are saying, this is your problem. This is my solution. Would you like to do it? That's it. And if you can't ask people to book you, then you have two choices. One, go get a job because somebody has to ask your clients to book you and you're never going to make it as a photographer in business. Or two, I guess there's three options. Two, learn how to do it. Uh, and then three is hire someone else to do it for you, which is totally fine too. You don't have to be the one to do any of the things in the business, but somebody has to do them. So you can facilitate somebody else taking that role also. All right, number five, this is the absolute most important thing of all, and I talk about it in every single course on the Boudoir Guild. You're like, what are you talking about, Mike? Courses? Yeah, head to boudoirguild.com and check out all the courses I have over there where you can learn lighting and posing, sales and pricing, and marketing, and all the stuff that I do to make multiple six figures of revenue as a solo boudoir photographer. So reflect and refine. That is number five. Nothing is ever going to work out for you the first time. If it does, that is astronomically lucky. Instead, you're going to try something and it's probably going to yield zero results. Maybe it's a marketing campaign. Maybe it's, it's usually marketing, uh, a new product menu you put out. Maybe it's a new style of lighting you want to try. You're going to try something for the first time. It's not going to work out the way you want it to, and you're going to have to adjust. And again, those are your options. You try something, it doesn't work. You can say, okay, cool. Well, marketing doesn't work. I guess I'm just not going to do that anymore, which means you're not in business. Go get a job. Or you can say, that specific thing I did did not produce results. What is broken? How do I fix it? Whether it's a Facebook ad campaign or it's your website not converting traffic or showing up in search results at all. Maybe you want to start doing dark and moody stuff like my new videos here uh, or like the stuff that I shoot. Maybe you want to start adding couples and not just single people in your boudoir sessions. So you're going to do shoots with couples to practice all that because it's not a realistic expectation to be good at things the first time. So do a thing, figure out what went well, what didn't go well, how do you adjust it for next time so that you can get better and then do it again and again and again and again. And every time you do, it's going to get a little bit better and you'll find new ways to improve it and new things that you don't repeat anymore. And after a while, you're going to have these just flawless systems in place to generate new leads, to nurture them, to book them, to do amazing transformational photo shoots. You make lots of money. They send you all their friends. Everybody wins. 
And then we go back to filming this on the island we've all pitched in to buy together. So those are the five things you need to start a photography business in 2023. Number one, change your identity. Number two, stay out of jail. Number three, figure out what you're selling. Number four, actually sell it. And number five, learn from your mistakes and do it again. So I've mentioned a couple times already, you can head to boudoirguild.com and learn exactly what I am doing to bring in multiple six figures of revenue as a one person show. And then eventually you'll hire more people to do all these things for you, like what I've been doing. And you can spend time creating YouTube videos or going on vacation or doing whatever the F you want because you have a system running that makes you money and you can live a life however you wanna do it. It's pretty darn sweet. You are amazing. I'll see you inside.